Hey everybody, welcome back to No Man's Sky. It's Rusty here with another episode of Logic School. In this episode, we'll build a switch that will hold a door open for a length of time that we can choose. In the process, we're going to learn about timers, the fundamentals of auto switches, and how to extend the length of a button's pulse. I'm going to start with the build and guide you through the process. For those who want to learn more about No Man's Sky Logic, stick around after the build and we'll do a thorough breakdown where we learn all the principles that make this circuit work. We begin with a door already in place. Place a power inverter near the door. Connect the power inverter to base power and attach it to the door. The door will snap shut. This is normal and expected. Now we need something to hold our door open. So place a red button above and wire it to power. Attach the output of the button to the last open node on the power inverter. Now the pulse from the button will open the door. Unfortunately, that pulse lasts for less than a second. Let's create a timer circuit that will extend the length of that pulse for any duration that we choose. To do that, install another power inverter alongside the first and an auto switch directly above that. Now we're going to install five more auto switches, proceeding to the right in an orderly fashion. Wire the button to the first auto switch and attach a wire connecting these two nodes. Without that little bit of wire, none of this will work, so it's pretty important. Connect the last empty node of the first auto switch to the power inverter and connect the power inverter to base power. Next is the part where we wire the timing portion of our timing circuit. Start by connecting the output node of the previous auto switch to the first and third nodes of the next one in line. Proceed to do the same for each of the auto switches in the row. This circuit will hold the door open for approximately 6 seconds, but we can choose to reduce or extend that time if we wish. Each auto switch we add to this chain will increase the time by approximately 1 second, allowing us to build accurate timers and clocks. Run a long wire back to the open node on the second power inverter, and that completes our circuit. Let's step back and watch it work. This is a good method for creating one-way doors, which are great for puzzle builds. But if you want to be able to open this door from the other side, that's easy enough. Attach another button on the other side of the door and wire it to base power. Wire the second button's output to the output node of the first button. Now each button can activate the timer equally. Now you know everything you need to know to make a timed door switch that works. But this is logic school. Knowing how is only half of the story. Let's take a look at the why and do a deep dive on the logic behind this circuit so that you can adapt these principles to fit your own build. In order to understand what's going on here, let's learn about auto switches and the various ways to use them. 
Auto switches have three nodes for attaching wires. Two nodes will be directly across from one another. For the sake of this discussion, we'll label them 1 and 2. These are our input and output through which power will flow. Since power can flow through the switch in either direction, the node where power comes in will always be node 1, and the node where power leaves will always be node 2. The third node is a modification node. Think of it like a gate that opens the flow of power when it receives a signal. We can attach these nodes to each other, and doing so will produce different effects. When the output node of an auto switch is connected to its modification node, that's node 2 to node 3, it acts like memory. Any signal received by its third node, like the signal from our button, will cause it to open and remain open until you manually sever its power. It essentially remembers that you've signaled it. When the input node of the auto switch is connected to its modification node, node 1 to node 3, the auto switch acts like a time delay. It will allow power to pass through in one direction, but it will take approximately one second to do so. I say approximately, because if you connect this component to an excessively complicated logic build, it will create lag. The first auto switch is key to this build. When the button is pressed, it will emit a short pulse of power. It only lasts for a moment, but it's long enough to trigger this auto switch. When the auto switch is triggered, it opens a path for power to travel up this wire to this node. Now the auto switch is triggering itself, and the power will stay flowing. It will continue flowing down this path until it triggers the power inverter holding the door open. Meanwhile, power is also flowing down this branching path to a row of auto switches. These auto switches make up the timing component of our circuit. The signal will continue to the next auto switch in the row, which will then delay the signal by one second and trigger the next auto switch, till all of the auto switches have been tripped. Next, the signal continues to the power inverter, which cuts the power to the first auto switch, acting like a reset button that returns our rig to its default start position, ready to be activated again. If you've watched this far, then you've learned how to create a timer, you know a couple of new ways to use an auto switch, and you've learned how to extend the length of a pulse indefinitely. I can't wait to see the creative ways you use these ideas in your own builds, because they unlock a lot of possibilities. If you've used this or a similar arrangement in your base, let us know in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more informative No Man's Sky content, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel as we are trying to reach 1,000 subscribers. I have some interesting things in the works, and this is the place to find all of my No Man's Sky content. This has been Rusty, and the channel is Fringe Theory Gaming. I hope you found this video useful, and again, thank you for watching.